Do you have runner's knee, also known as patellofemoral syndrome? You might. Do you have pain when you're going down steps? Uh, do you have pain with jumping, running, all referred to kind of the front region of the knee? You may have this particular condition. It's also known as retropatella syndrome. Uh, it also can be known as uh, lateral facet syndrome. So there's other names for this, or anterior knee, knee syndrome. At the end of this video, you're going to learn a few things to, to tell whether you could benefit from like a soft insert, uh, what exercises you could do, and what approaches to it, you know, what degree of success that you may get from, you know, working on it. We'll give some treatment options at the end that you could do at home and at least get started. So what are some of the symptoms you may experience? You'll, you may experience some kind of dull achiness in the area. You may have some cracking that you'll feel, feel or actually hear in the kneecap with certain movements. Um, it can happen after a trauma that can kind of get started, but a lot of times it happens without actually a true trauma moment. It kind of gradually um, comes on and gets worse and gets worse. Um, you typically don't have a lot of swelling in the area. Um, it, it is something that's really not associated with a bad or kind of any heat in the air or signs of a, an inflammatory response, but, be, but can be quite, quite painful. So how do we make the diagnosis? Um, it's really based on a lot of clinical evaluation. It's based upon certain clinical tests as far as how we move you, check your strength, and also really based upon your history. Um, how it occurred. Um, does it happen because you started running a little bit as far as greater distance? Did you have a change in footwear? Um, did you have a change in activities? Um, anything with job responsibilities? Um, different activities, sport, entering a new sport. Um, sometimes our runners, they'll, <clears throat> they'll start running outside, running a more of a, cam a surface that's kind of beveled at the end, some of these roads that have got this high arch here, and that'll cause that, that, that leg to kind of try to, a little different type of surface you're running on, uh, changes in surface. All these things can lead up to this particular problem. So it's really important when you're talking to your therapist or you're trying to take care of this is we understand how it got started. So that's why a good history, understanding <clears throat> what your goals are, what happened, how it started, all those things lead up to understanding the best way to treat it too. If we don't take care of the trigger, reason why it started, um, we will never understand it fully. We may, even if we do good strengthening, um, change in footwear, or maybe orthotics, all these different interventions, maybe taping, we may not get to the origin of problems. So we really want to take a look at those steps and really figuring out the triggers and understanding how this developed and that allow us better to actively and quickly treat this. This, is, this can be a very difficult thing to treat him for a physician, a physician physical therapist, um, so you've got to really pay attention to those facts too. So we have one test that's out there um, that we'll hear about called the Clark's test. Um, basically, you're going to have the person lying down. You're going to take your hand as the examiner, push down on the kneecap, and take this, what they call the web space here, apply pressure down on my kneecap, okay? And you have the person actively tighten Okay, and try and tighten and straighten and tighten the quadricep muscle right here. And as you do that, it'll reproduce pain. All right. So if you see it on the model here, this is our kneecap. And we're applying pressure, putting a little pressure downward like that. And we're having someone tighten the thigh, the thigh muscle right here, the muscle in the front of the thigh here, in the front, tighten and resist. And if you get a person has complaints, the same pain they're coming to, to you for, um, they'll talk about pain in kneecap, that's considered a positive test. Not a great test. So you really want to look at the clinical history, and that just means um, what the person says, what you're experiencing, is very important as far as understanding how to treat them. So keep that in mind. One test, but really go with the clinical history. That's the most important. Now, once you start treatment, if you have six to eight weeks of treatment, whatever the, the particular choice, and you're really not improving, you may have to take further steps. You may have to do an MRI, you may have to look at more imaging, just to see if there's something that's missing, something that's not, you know, um, not typical, um, to look a little closer at it. You know, after one or two years, then the other thought is that, you know, they might be looking at more surgical options. Um, these can be very resistant to care, you know, not everyone improves, so sometimes you, know, you can feel people deal with this kind of chronic pain. Either it's not approached well, or also maybe they're doing something that's kind of triggering these symptoms that we haven't identified. So some of the early approaches, we have someone that's acutely tender, they're having trouble with just basic movements. Um, uh, some kind of form of anti-inflammatory can help them out. Um, not that I can prescribe it, but if your doctor allows you to, you can do uh, some ibuprofen-based uh, medications, uh, Advil, Motrin, or just a generic ibuprofen. Um, 
also it's like a modified rest you know if we can let that body heal and have a little less swelling by by taking away the activity or thing that's actually causing it and and i don't like to shut down people completely you know i want to give them something to do but not whatever the trigger is you know we we want to get rid of that so um if we have someone that's running we'll have them do a walking program as long as it's reasonably comfortable and it's not triggering their symptoms you want to keep reasonably active because especially in the athletic population our runners we don't want to completely shut them down you know we can even do, we even sometimes do like a walk jog walk jog program jog program where we're having them just kind of break up short segments of jogging or running and then combination with a little bit of walking we just don't want you to decondition we want to keep you moving um it's important to do alternative strategies and things like that um, so we don't decondition other areas uh, of our body. So as we take care of an area here at the knee, we also decondition everything else because we stop doing certain activities. So we want to be really careful about that and be really progressive and get that, that you, you know, you're, you're moving as much as we can without shutting you completely down. So modified rest is really uh, one of the things we look at. Um, some form of strengthening, um, most likely some kind of form of hip strengthening, working on the hip girdle and trunk and also some working on the quadriceps and hamstring musculature, the muscles that cross the knee joint, um, is one of the general recommendations that's really well, pretty well accepted across the literature. It's one of the strongest evidence for having this condition change. So it's um, working on the kind of the core, I, I like to call the trunk and, and hip, the core muscles, um, and also some of the muscles that cross the joint help stabilize that, that kneecap and kind of help it in theory track better and, and move better in the groove here. So as that kneecap moves, it doesn't kind of bounce around and cause problems, which they think is part of the potential problems for it. And other people, depending on the, the age of the individual, there can be other things that can make this a little harder to recover from. Sometimes people have more arthritis in that patellofemoral joint that can make this rehab take a little longer or make it a little harder to do it. So we have to consider that. Um, there's also some thoughts about um, soft inserts. You'll see right here. You can put in your shoe like an over-the-counter. This isn't a custom insert. It's a soft insert. It's not a rigid one. Um, I would consider almost a semi-rigid one. Um, these, you could put these into your shoes or you know, sneakers. Um, if you have a type of sneaker, you pull out the original insert here and then pop, pop this in. And uh, can give good, good pain relief, especially in the early stages, you know, just to kind of break that pain cycle, get a little bit more comfortable. It's not for everyone, not everyone responds to it, but it's just one of those options in the early stages. Another thing is, um, and we'll talk about this in our next video, is and we're going to give you the specific exercises next time in our next video, so look for that. And we'll also showing, show you a couple taping techniques. Um, but anything that basically um, we can work at bracing. Um, different types of taping that will kind of guide that kneecap and provide a little bit of support to it until we have adequate strength and the condition has calmed down. And there's a couple, some McConnell taping and the Kinesio taping. You'll see that taping a lot of athletes. You'll see them across their shoulders and you know, in the Olympics you'll see a lot of folks with those on there. Or actually a patella tracking brace that sometimes can help you um, just kind of guide that kneecap so as you're moving it's keeping this in this groove. You know, So this is the femur here, this is the patella. We're just getting into that groove, so as we move and all that, it kind of it guides it through that area. So that's something we'll also show and demonstrate on the next video. So some things to consider, and that's generally the approach to treatment. So this this condition sometimes, you know, patellofemoral syndrome um, or runner's knee, can mimic something else. You can have situations where <clears throat> our hip right here refers pain down to the kneecap. Uh, you can have a thing called a plica syndrome. You can have um, arth arthritis of some sort um, that's referred from the lumbar spine. You can have a disc herniation in the lower back that'll give you pain that radiates into this area. Interesting, some of these conditions, you know, when we talk about the hip and the lower back here, they'll refer to the knee, but you'll only have knee pain. They'll say, wait, I don't have any back pain. Why are you talking about my back? Some of these conditions will give you knee pain with the absence of hip or back pain which gets a little confusing. Uh, that's where um, imaging can help you, whether you take an MRI of your hip, your lower back, that can tell us a little bit about it. Um, <clears throat> also, um, doing a clinical examination, like what we'll do is we'll do an assessment of the hip. We kind of, that's kind of included, or it is included in this assessment, but really working through it and see if there's any change in those pain levels by just directly addressing the hip or the lower back. Um, we'll do a full range of motion, check all planes of motion. If we can reproduce your pain or turn down your pain by moving the back, you know, through a few different movements, that tells us kind of a little diagnostic. It tells us a little bit about it. 
Um, does it happen often? I can't give you the exact statistics on how often it occurs, but it's definitely something that if you're having a chronic um, knee issue, is runner's knee, may not be a runner's knee. It may be something else that you have to look at a little closer. So it's really important. A lot of times when we talk about different topics uh, um, here at the channel here at Apex, we 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 got to realize that some of these things are hard to self-treat because sometimes you just don't have the right location of pain. You may be thinking it's a knee issue and it's being referred from the back. What a kick in the butt that is. You can have a herniation, you can have arthritic hip. So there's other things that can give you pain in the knee that may not be as readily apparent. So keep that in mind. If you're kind of not getting better and you're struggling a little bit, you may want to take a closer look at that. Okay, so one of the last things they've noticed in one of the studies is they actually did a manipulation or stretching to the lower back, which changed, which goes back to my original, my point I just talked about. It is a manipulation of the lower back and they actually had a change in knee pain levels. So that is something just to keep in mind. There has been some approach that some of these pains are actually coming from the lower back and they actually did one where they did a manipulation, a stretch to the lower back and it actually affected and improved pain levels of the kneecap. Um, probably not as common, but it is something to keep in mind that you could get a referral from the lumbar spine that may be giving the knee pain. Um, in our next video, you're gonna see um, that'll be posted soon. You're going to see um, our approach as far as what strengthening exercise we commonly give, stretches, flexibility. We'll even demonstrate a few taping techniques. So look for that soon. And I hope this gives you an idea if you have runner's knee and also some food for thought. Have a great day.